everybody, and welcome to Mike Nerichlo Online, sharing my love for people, wine, food, and all things made passionately. Alright, today's show, you'll notice I'm back in the garage, you may also notice I'm playing with the lighting a little bit here. I think this is a really cool effect on the camera. Anyway, <laughs> previous episode, the 2011 Asoyu Celebrity Wine Festival. Great set I put together the highlights and what a blast we had up there. Now when I say we, it's Mike and Mike or myself and Michael Ratchin, my behind the scenes guy, kind of my cameraman. You don't see him as much on the show. You've seen him a couple times, but he pops around. Anyway, we had a blast in the Soyuz, hanging out with everybody up there. So much good food, so many great people, so much good wine, and just such a great time. Anyway, make sure you check out the episode above to see it. If you weren't there this year, try to make it out next year, even to one event if you can. It's totally worth it. I guarantee it. I guarantee you we'll have a blast together. Anyway, while we were up there, not only did we have the chance to meet, we had the privilege to meet the owner of a brand new winery, Ted Kane, the owner of Riverstone Winery. That was a worthwhile experience. We took some time, and one of the days we were up there and went over to Riverstone and hung out with Ted. So have a look at that, and then we'll get back to tasting his wines. Well, it's great to get you guys by here, yeah, and finally, and I know we chatted online a little bit, but uh, yeah. it's great to have you out. Yeah. That's a super picturesque property, you've done a brilliant job putting this all together. Tell us about, well, before we get into your wine, but what got you into wine in the first place? What was that bug? Well, it all started out when I was uh, about uh, 18 or 19 years old. You know, I just started out from, uh, just, just, I think it all led from a chemistry set, basically, because yeah. uh, I love fermentation, yeah. and uh, I um, started out with... Uh, crab apples and rhubarb and I think even some potatoes uh, at one point in time just fermenting. I didn't like what I made at the time but it sure was fun trying to make it. And then I went on to kits and then I went on to uh, Italian market grapes yep. and then progressed out to BC grapes and uh, the venture just keeps going. Yeah, there, how long have you guys own this property for here? Or so well, we uh, purchased in 2001 and moved on to the land in 2002. Awesome. And you've had the privilege of planting everything on the property too. That's and right. And kind of cultivating it yourself, yep. getting it going. Yep. It all started out with uh, sagebrush and cactuses. Very kind of when you walk along, they jump up in the back of your leg, those cactuses. <laughs> those ones. I've had those stuck in my sandal, my toe. I know what that's like around here, especially as so yeah. is. So what yeah. are you planting on the property or what have you got growing? Well, uh, because of where we're located uh, down by Oliver and between Oliver and Asoyas, I think it's the premier area to grow reds mm -hmm. and I love Bordeaux varietals mm -hmm. uh, so we plant with Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc and Malbec yeah. for that big Bordeaux blend. Yeah. And well that's uh, cool there's very few people really doing a lot of Malbec here in the Okanagan either. That's right yeah, yeah. and yeah. our vines are now well established so they've made it through the cold snaps without too much of a, a glitch at all and uh, you know really happy with the fruit we've been producing here. Awesome yeah. excellent yeah. well yeah. I'm super excited to taste your wines back in the garage and tell everybody about them. Again, yeah. Thanks. Well, I look forward to it. Yeah. And uh, thanks again for coming yeah. out. It's a pleasure to yeah. meet you. Yeah, it's great, great to meet you. Yeah, it's good cool. to meet you guys. Thanks. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much, Ted, for having Mike and I come by the winery. We had such a great time hanging out with you. Such a blast getting to know you. And I hope that we can do more of that in the future. I'm so stoked to taste your wines right now. Before I do so, Ted, I just want to tell everybody out there. Ted's attention to detail and his passion just comes through everywhere on that winery. I hope you could see a little bit of that from the shots we took, but the fact that he got to plant all those vines, he's got, it's his baby. That winery is his baby. He planted the vines from the ground up when he purchased it. He's built the building. He's done everything there. And when you show up, you know it. You can see Ted in everything. And I'm really hoping that he comes through in his wines and his attention to detail. And if his wines are as good as the way his winery looks, I'm going to be quite impressed because I love whenever new pup wineries pop up and they've got that passion, they're ready to go. All right, let's do this. <laughs> so this is Ted's or Riverstone's 2010 Pinot Gris. Nice, simple little packaging there. He's not trying to go over the top, just something friendly and approachable. Very much like the way we felt at his winery. All right, Pinot Gris. Another thing Ted's doing up there. He's experimenting a little bit with a few grape varieties you don't see often, but he's decided to choose some grape varieties that have stood the test of time in the Okanagan, like Pinot Gris. And here's the thing in the Okanagan. If you're making Pinot Gris and it doesn't turn out very good, you're not doing something right, because Pinot Gris tends to rock it in the Okanagan. So here's, let's see how this one works out. 
Ooh, okay. <laughs> On the nose right away. I can tell I'm going to like this wine. It's Pinot Grill, right? But it's Pinot Grill with a little bit of something, something extra going on. You get that kind of, I'm going to say, hints of pear meets apple kiwi, a little bit of pineapple coming through. But the other thing I find neat on this is it's got a really interesting floral characteristic coming through. Something kind of floral and slightly spicy. Kind of reminds you of the aromas of Gewurztraminer. Which leads me to another point. Ted's Vineyards are planted right next door right next door to another one of my favorite wineries, classic vineyard sites, is Wild Goose. Now Wild Goose, their facility isn't next year, but their Mystic River Vineyard is right next door where some of their epic Gewurztraminer comes from, some of their epic Riesling comes from. That is an amazing white wine spot in the Okanagan, all over area. Something to keep in mind, Wild Goose is a, another epic winery. All right. Yeah, on the nose it comes through with some neat characteristics. Let's see how it goes. Okay, first wine, good job, <laughs> I like this, it's Pinot Gris, and it is a balanced Pinot Gris, um, it's not that, that straight up racing Pinot Gris, and it's not a big heavy wine, I'm going to call it almost a medium bodied white wine, definitely the realm of me, it's not light body, it's not heavy, it's a medium bodied white, white wine, you get a lot of that apple kiwi on the palate, some more kind of something tropical coming through. Uh, a little bit of that star fruit realm, something like that. Yeah, star fruit. But still, the finish has got that, wow, I'm still tasting the finish. That's impressive. Still tasting the finish. The finish has got some of that, that spice, like I said, almost like a ginger floral aspect to it, but just a subtle hint. It's nice, but it's complete through my palate. Mid palate gives you a little bit of that slightly creaminess. I like that. It's a, it's a full, this wine has everything going on. It doesn't have any holes in it. And it's tasty. Got great acidity. Makes my mouth water. Makes me want food. Great chicken dinner wine. I think we're having a roasted chicken tonight. I might have to put this one with that. But yeah, good wine. So on my wine rating system, let's start with this one. This Pinot Gris. I think it's twenty bucks for this wine. I'm gonna put this in the realm of great. It's a great Pinot Gris. Well done for your first release vintage. Another great thing about Rivers Riverstone Winery. He's waited long enough. A lot of wineries, I mean, okay, grape vines in general, take about five years at least to start producing half decent fruit. And even then they're infant vines. Ted has waited. It's been five years now. A lot of wineries will like, go five years when it's just producing fruit and push wines out. And then you get kind of a subpar product and then your reputation's on the line. I think Ted understands that your first vintage is kind of your introductory to the wine world. So you better impress people and so far solid wine second wine this is exciting what I'm excited to talk about first of all you have to check out the color of this and then I'll tell you about it look at the color have you ever seen okay it's a rosé but have you ever seen a more pink 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 rosé in your life I can't say I have I think this color is amazing it's super cool it's, it's such a pretty color at the same time Malbec. There's very few people doing Malbec anyway in British Columbia here. This, I don't know if I've ever, I personally have never tasted before or seen a Malbec Rosé. That's where this is cool. Ted is doing something different, making himself stand out. Malbec Rosé. And as you all know, Malbec, we just came through that crazy phase with Argentina and the value Malbec you get over there, but Malbec is a vibrant colored grape, making very juicy, very fruit berry flavored wines. Let's see how this Malbec Rosé plays out. What's, what else is cool is he's doing a big Bordeaux blend as well. It's not released yet, but he's got Malbec mixed in there too, um, among the other Meritage or Bordeaux grape varieties. And I mean, a lot of BC wineries, when they do a Meritage or a Bordeaux blend, they're just doing the three. With Malbec in there, it gives us just a whole other layer. Anyway, let's see what's going on. Wow, okay. I don't know if it's just the color telling me this, but on the nose, straight away. Straight, okay, you know when you open a like fruit cocktail can of, it's got the pears and the pineapple and all that, but it's always got that one, that one maraschino cherry on top. And you fight over it with everybody. And there's never enough of those maraschino cherries. They should put more of those in there. Anyway, 
This is canned maraschino cherry. That's the initial thing I get out of the nose. Just poof, maraschino cherry. Yeah, so much of it. So if you always feel gypped when you have fruit salad from a can, buy some of this wine. You won't feel gypped about the one maraschino cherry anymore. You get a whole bottle of it. Let's see how it does on the palate. Mmm. Good rosé. Interesting rosé. That cherry is definitely coming through. In the mouth, it's got a really neat minerality coming through. It tastes, you're tasting kind of that, that wet gravel sort of flavor. Um, wet spring rain, so that kind of minerality. Um, but mixed with that cherry, you get this really interesting, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to venture to say kind of rhubarb. Yeah, it's got a bit of savoriness. Rhubarb meets watermelon. Interesting. Interesting rosé. Not those typical strawberry flavors. It's Malbec, man. Not many people are doing Malbec rosé. 20 bucks for this one as well. Good as city, man. Between these two wines, my mouth is fully watered. I don't know if I showed you that bottle. Anyway, this is 2010 Malbec rosé. 20 bucks for that one. I prefer the quality of the Pinot Gris. I think the Pinot Gris is a higher quality wine. Malbec's, the Malbec rosé is a fun wine. A lot of people are going to like this. It's super juicy. Holy smoke. Very fruit forward. Very juicy. A lot of that cherry, watermelon, rhubarb sort of thing going on. Fun wine. Like I said, Pinot Gris, I'm rating great. This one, we're going to go good. This is a good all-around kind of everyday wine. Everybody, fun summer wine. All right. The last wine I've got from Riverstone Winery. The 2009 Cabernet Franc. Now... Like I was saying a second ago, Ted has chosen great varieties that tend to do well in the Okanagan. Cabernet Franc is a prime, a prime example of a red grape variety that does exceptionally Okanagan. And what I find super exciting about Cabernet Franc in the Okanagan is there's very few places on the planet, on the planet, hear that right, that does Cabernet Franc well. I mean, Napa Valley, they do a Cab Sav, and they do it well. The Loire Valley in French, France, they do Cab Franc. They make a very different, more lighter bodied style Cab Franc. BC, we can make a big, bold Cab Franc that shows its real true characteristics. So if somebody one day were to ask me, what is your prediction for the grape of BC? I personally don't think we'll ever have a specific grape for BC. Our climate is way too diverse. But if the question was posed, I think Cabernet Franc would be on the top of my list, somewhere in there, because it does so well and makes such an interesting wine. So I think Ted's a very wise man for picking Cabernet Franc as one of his fruits, especially growing it down in Oliver. That's the area where a lot of our big Bordeaux varieties tend to rock it. All right, now you can see it's spilled a little bit. I've tasted this one earlier. Um, can't say I'm tasting it for the first time on camera. Reason being, I wanted to let it open up and I wanted to let it breathe. I wanted to give it, let it show its true character in all fairness to this wine, all right? This is 2009, so let's get right into it. <sighs> the nose, okay, wow. That's a nice wine, just right away on the nose. It's, this is a red wine that I don't even really want to think too much about because it just smells so nice. I just want to taste it, I want to drink it, I want to enjoy it with people. Okay, let's talk about it. I'm going to say this is a food-friendly wine, especially right now. It's drinking a little bit young. It's 09. We'll give it that. We're, I'm gonna, that's my, my one criticism for it. It's drinking young, but that's it. Because I've left this open and it's still breathing really nice. Wow. Tasting awesome. This is going to age so well. I'd love to lie a few dip bottles of this down for like five years and then taste it again. It's going to smoothen out and everything. But right now, it's drinking awesome. If you buy a bottle of this, decant it, it's going to knock your socks off. Sorry, let's talk about it. It's got your typical Cabernet black fruit varieties. You've got like black currants, some of that cherry sort of skin. But mixed in there, you get this earthy, like this earthy driven dark chocolate flavor. There's coffee bean in here. Coffee bean meets kind of leather. It's got these, this great tannic backbone. It's not in your face tank back when it's not dry in my mouth or anything like that. It's just full of flavor. It's like a leathery, leathery sort of pepper tannic backbone. Wow. It's got a balanced level of, of bright fruit. Yeah, big fruit. 
tons of big fruit. Meat's kind of a chocolatey earthiness with hints of like savory layers. Like, like I said, that pepper, I'm gonna venture to say like a little bit of kind of garden radish or root vegetable sort of flavors. But so many different things going on. Like I, I get some tobacco leaf on the nose on here. Wow. It's 26 bucks for this Cab Franc too. I think you can buy his wines online. If you see this episode, I'll have the link below for his website for um, Riverstone Winery. Make sure you click on it. Get your hands on some of this Cab Franc. It's good Cab Franc. Ted, I'm gonna be picking some more of this up. That's all I have to say about that. Um, wine rating system, where am I gonna put this Cab Franc? Okay, we called the Pinot Gris great. Cab Franc, let's go, we're gonna go great plus. Great plus. It's, it's, I, I, I so want to say awesome, but that doesn't r leave room for Ted to make even more awesome Cab Franc down the road. It's great plus, we'll put it that way. It's not, it's so close to awesome. So close to awesome, but it's not quite there. It leaves room for Ted to make awesome and epic Cab Franc down the road. Ted, great plus. Thank you so much for coming straight into the market and producing and releasing really good approachable wines. So excited about the future of Riverstone Winery. Ted, it was a blast to hang out and meet you. Everybody out there, thank you so much for watching today. And please, please do not forget and always remember, wine, de We'll see you on the next episode.